ladies and gentlemen and a warm welcome to third edition of Warehousing Life brought to you by India Warehousing Show 2020 in association with our associate partner Richland Developers and our core partner JNS Systech Private Limited. So I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here with us today and we are very pleased to be able to welcome those who have been with us for a long time and now as well to those who are new to the Indian supply chain uh, ecosystem and also to our webinar series. So, you know, before we quickly begin, I would like to discuss the uh, today's agenda with you. So, we are going to begin with a Power Pack panel discussion. After that, we have a very interesting OEM solution presentation by one of the international leaders from JNS Sistec. And the surprising element which we have added to this edition is we are going to unveil the theme of our next webinar and the agenda. So, I would request everyone to stay tuned till that, then. So without any further delay, I would like to introduce our first session that is enabling supply chain autonomy through digital transformation, Vision 2025. So we have our very distinguished leader from Pushman and Wakefield who has very kindly agreed to moderate the session. His name is Mr. Vivek Dahia. He's Managing Director North, Logistic and Industrial. So before I hand it over to Vivek, I would like to make a quick housekeeping announcement for everyone. So first, I would request all the panelists to keep their video on during the discussion and only unmute your mic during the during during your talk. And uh, I would like to request all the attendees to please drop your questions in the Q&A box, which you can see right bottom to your screen. And the last and the least, I would we will be running a poll during the session. So requesting all the attendees to please do participate in that. Over to you, Vivek. Thank you so much. Thanks for that. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Reed Punch Exhibition, for the opportunity. And thank you, every panelist uh, who has uh, agreed to join us in this discussion and uh, share their inputs and thoughts and experiences. Uh, for everybody else who's uh, uh, registered and are uh, uh, part of this discussion, uh, uh, you are in for a treat because uh, not only is the topic very futuristic in terms of how the supply chain logistics business will change. We have inputs from multiple diverse sources. We have technology people, we have real estate people, we have supply chain specialists, we have people from the e-commerce side, uh, we have domain specialists from the pharma side. So uh, we hope this would be a very informative session and uh, uh, hope to answer all your questions at the end of this discussion. Uh, also, we, uh, there would be a lot of interaction of ideas between many of our uh, speakers as well. We'll try to make it as interactive for you as possible as well. I'll quickly introduce the, uh, the panelists today. Uh, we have uh, with us today Mr. Abhijit Malkani, Country Head for ESR. ESR is one of the largest uh, warehousing developers uh, in India and in APAC. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Vishwajit Bhattacharya, uh, partner uh, uh, an automotive industry leader at uh, uh, IBM for India and South Asia. We have Mr. Uh, Vineet Manjgaukar, uh, CEO of Armstrong Builders. Uh, we also have with us Mr. Badrinath Batuda, Director of Supply Chain Management of Swiggy. We have with us uh, Mr. Vijay Kumar, uh, Head Logistics uh, at IT. We also have uh, another uh, in, uh, uh, input from us from the e-commerce side. We have Mr. Akhil Khanna, Vice President of Supply Chain Operations for GEO. We have also with us uh, a PhD, Dr. Vaibhav Kulkarni, Honorable Secretary and Board Member, Health and Dietary Supplement Association of India. Uh, he is uh, also Director at Abbott and a Senior Leadership Member at Abbott. Uh, he's done his PhD in uh, uh, Medical Biotechnology. Uh, we have then with us Mr. Mohit Agarwal, uh, General Demand Channel Management from Janssen. Uh, Janssen is the pharmaceutical arm of uh, Johnson & Johnson. And uh, we have uh, finally, uh, last but not the least, uh, Mr. Ravi C, Practice Partner Blockchain Business Head, APAC for Bipro. As you can see, a very diverse group and we should get inputs and, and, and pearls of wisdom from so many directions. So let's... Uh, dive uh, straight into this. Uh, my first uh, question, and so the, it's probably how we would want to start the conversation, and I, I, would, I would direct my question to Mr. Chief and Anil. Uh, there is this need for automation because of COVID. People think that, that there are as many touchless uh, uh, supply chain uh, points as possible. 
simultaneously people feel that the uh, automation might result in cost increase so in this tussle between cost of automation and cost control who do you think will win in the short term and long term so my question to both viswajit and anil Uh, thanks, Vivek. Uh, it's a brilliant question to start the discussion. Uh, in fact, this deliberation is on for quite some time now. Now, the the whole issue and the requirement arises due to COVID, uh, like the social distancing has brought this touchless logistics discussion once again in the center stage. Each organization is to look at the automation from three lenses. Uh, number one, the compliance. Okay, now it could be a governmental compliance requirement, or it could be a the organization's client's compliance requirement at times the second part is the competitive advantage uh, it could be in terms of the cost advantage or or the various kpis otf and other uh, supply chain kpis the third is the employee empowerment and that's new that's a new focus which is kind of coming up uh, due to covid uh, the whole social distancing is putting a very very new set of requirements as well as the whole health and safety aspect is kind of concerned now having said that each investment in in automation is to have a very clear roi or an roc which way you look at it uh, unless it's a, it's a very specific compliance re- requirement now i believe in the principle of start small and start early now this helps in terms of it in it's a, it requires a low investment i can look at a specific area specific focus area understand what i want to achieve very very clear uh, financial terms as well as Uh, other uh, efficiency terms, and and do it, and and get the get it get get going in that particular area, get the success, and a lot of learning along with that as you as you kind of go a bit, and then then you then you kind of start to get into into the larger area. Now, what actually happens initially is that you start with a very low investment over here. That was the that has been the issue all through, and 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 once you kind of uh, get the success. and then start replicating it start paying for it itself okay and and that's that's the whole concept which is which is kind of making it agile and 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 the in today's world in the digital technology in most of this uh, kind of the whole agile way of working is come coming in the forefront and that is in a way fast tracking many of this uh, automation in the industry that's how i look at it um, but having said that the there has to be a very clear goal what we what we what each and every organization needs to achieve through automation understood uh, anil what's your thought from somebody who will probably use these technologies in their uh, business i uh, sure with so uh, let me just put it in a manner you know in the short term i see actually covid gaining ground the reason i say this is that if you see in general cash flow across industry has been severely impacted right and somewhere it is very pronounced and somewhere is in some of the industry it is probably mitigated but the cash flow crunch is there right which needs to be addressed so focus right now is actually in seeing the inflow exceeding the outflow which as of now is not the case right so focus has to shift to the outflow of cash so industry as such is looking into the cost control part Yeah. So yeah. immediate and short term perspective, right? Business sustainability is the first priority everywhere. So actually, business was focusing once again on you know establishing financial viability first. So while Biswajit was saying you know the investment part uh, and the low investment part, but uh, and I'll come to that part also, right? The investment is required in automation. But today, even if I want to set up. a small operation which is which involves the current basic operational requirements some of our partners are actually not willing to invest they are not willing to commit because of you know so before so okay let me give another uh, slight thing you know uh, so before an initial period of lockdown the number of covid cases were low but fear of covid was high and today it is actually the other way around right so in long term the new normal will actually stabilize right right so and so once this stabilization comes in the new requirements routines models will start falling in place and taking shape yeah. once uh, that starts yeah. happening right the need was going to come back and the learning 
of COVID also also going to come back, and that incorporation will come in. And that is the time in the long term, the automation would actually have to play a significant element in any business or operational strategy. The reason for that is actually simple, right? Uh, to carry out operation, if hands, and I'm talking from uh, operations perspective, the you know, supply chain perspective, right? Uh, and the warehousing operation, if hands need to pick or pack, or you know, we want those Amazons and the flip carts to come and deliver at our place, those hands need to be available. Otherwise, how are you going to operate? So to mitigate those risks, you know, automation will have to be there. So this is uh, what my view is, which I think I would like to put. put yeah, I think that's a very realistic uh, uh, summary of how things would be. That in the short term, uh, yes, COVID will probably uh, you know, gain ground. But in the medium and long term, everybody acknowledges that automation is going to go. Now, uh, Vishwajit mentioned regarding ROI. And I think my next question uh, to, uh, to an uh, you know, end user and, and a technology or a service provider is on automation. So, so in automation, there is this whole discussion about perhaps in India, there is a higher payback period. By some estimates, it probably takes five to eight years. That's estimates. We don't know whether that's correct or not. So is the post-COVID scenario offering solutions to this challenge? So I, I posed this question to Vijay from IPC because he would probably be using it in his uh, boxes and to uh, uh, Vineet because they're providing this technology. So let's have that debate in terms of who's, what is the actual uh, uh, payback period. Yeah, so... Um... Thanks, Vivek, for the question. Uh, this is Vineet here. I'm chairman of Armstrong. We are India's biggest intralogistics automation solution provider. Uh, so first of all, Vivek, uh, the period that you mentioned, like five to eight years uh, as an ROI estimate, uh, I think that that's slightly a, a little bit of a myth. Uh, the realistic time frame actually is two to four years. And the proof of it is that, you know, we at Armstrong, we are growing at 50% CAGR for the last five years. And we have many umpteen number of proofs to uh, prove it. Uh, in India, the ROI never works in simple terms like, you know, the headcount or the number of people is reduced. Unlike, you know, in the US or the Europe where it's simple. If it's like you have got rid of one person working there, you can easily justify $100,000 or euro worth of an investment. In India, it never is like that. It never will be like that. In India, the ROI is governed by several factors, which include savings in space, optimization, various factors. Uh, live example of uh, quick ROIs, ROIs, if I may give you, I have several names that come to me, which is, for example, a case in ITC, Ranjanga near Pune that we did, a four crore project, which paid back in only one and a half year. It's a live example. And Vijay can later on validate this. Uh, then we have Unilever's and the Nestle's, we have the Haldirams and Amazon and Flipkart, whose ROIs, they do not invest if the ROI is not coming within three years. Uh, so basically what works is the four Vs. The four Vs are, to, I mean, to justify automation in India, these are the four Vs. One is high visibility, high value, high volume, and high variety. And a combination either or of all these four Vs justifies automation. Uh, the typical, I would say the starting point is, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to give you, uh, you know, uh, a measure which is outside the warehouse, but to measure the warehouse. Uh, so typically the starting point for a viable automation is about if your warehouse is doing about 10 trucks of uh, input output per day, that's a starting point. Below that, it doesn't make sense really. Uh, between 30 to 40 trucks, I mean, it becomes very convincing to have automation in your warehouse. And beyond 50 to 60 trucks per day, if you're doing, then it becomes a very compelling argument. The question is, how are you surviving without automation? The question about post-COVID, I think one major factor that should be considered is the business continuity. So if all of us ask, ask each other, they ask oneself this question that, you know, how much business have we lost uh, due to all these stoppages due to COVID? And the answer is globally, it's trillions. And today, the automation business globally is in the range of maybe 42 billion. So while the losses are in trillions, so that, so COVID brings a new ROI uh, to automation. That's my take. Understood. And you gave an example of uh, ITC. I have a feeling Vijay will agree with you. So Vijay, over to you. What's your opinion? 
Um, thanks, Vivek. I definitely, uh, you know, uh, would say that yes, uh, whatever uh, Mr. Vinith is saying is absolutely right. Uh, but I just want to give you a, a backdrop that why it it really happened. In fact, uh, the time which is five to eight years which has been given the, the question by you is was absolutely right. If we talk about the pre-COVID scenario, where people were more focusing on the part of digitization, uh, whether in terms of AI or you know other factors, or more on the digital aspect of it. This automation part has really gained, uh, you know, a, a, a track because uh, because of the COVID situation, and that's more, uh, you know, prominently focused because of the manpower aspect suddenly became so critical, and then you know, different norms of social distancing, people availability, returning back of lab, uh, you know labor uh, to the work uh, workplace, all these things have actually uh, you know made it very very critical. Uh, as far as this automation is concerned, so these are the backdrops where you know people have started thinking very, very uh, fast on these uh, these things, and uh, that is why a lot of people are talking about a lot of companies, even the larger companies like uh, you know Maruti, Tata, Toyota, all these things are you are talking about that they need to go you know full blown on the digitization or the automation aspect of it. Now there was also a, a sort of a question in their mind that you know uh, does the financial position come into uh, you know uh, come into picture uh, uh, during this automation and then you know most of the people like us also as an ITC the, you know they they thought it is a crucial factor in the you know complete shift of uh, you know become from AI uh, from digitization to uh, automation and then people thought that you know rather having more losses in the future it is better to invest right now. And then you know, uh, go for full blown, uh, blown automation, uh, make it as fast as possible, rather than waiting for five to eight years to you know uh, thinking on the ROI aspect. Make <clears> it shorter <throat> ROI, and then uh, try to bring uh, the productions online. And accordingly, if we can increase the revenue, so those are the aspects that people you know thought really, and then uh, started uh, focusing upon it. Uh, a lot of people you know think about it that automation may mean lesser number of manpower. But actually, it is not that easy. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of effort in terms of you know, requiring new skill uh, skill set by the people, new technology that has to be brought in. So uh, I think the, all the organization has to make a very very fair choice between the the man and machine uh, at the particular location, and then should take a decision basis uh, what what is fit for them. Um, you know, beneath would also also be taking from their organization. They would be presenting in all the organizations accordingly. And then people are taking decisions based on that. And uh, in the post-COVID-19, uh, you know, world are only uh, places where you know, companies are willing to invest in automation. And uh, the return on investment that we expect from our automation is is basically between five to ten x. That most of the people, uh, you know, from the SMCG are saying like that. So uh, what I am trying to say is that uh, you know, though automation is in demand, it is definitely growing up. People have started thinking about it. But uh, you know, most of the people should first review it, analyze it, basis the workforce availability, and then the financial position of the organization. And then you know they should take a decision, and then accordingly go ahead. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Vijay. So uh, I think uh, post COVID, if the uh, the you know, period has reduced to the pay by period, that's a that's a very good learning for everyone. And I think because we've spoken about COVID so much and. Health and safety remain a concern due to COVID, and and uh, that's why we can assume that it will necessitate the increase of automation in supply chain. Let's have a discussion uh, with people from the pharma side uh, who uh, are more in tune with these questions that get asked on a day in day out basis. Let's ask uh, let's ask uh, Vaibhav uh, and Mohit that what do you think will immediately happen uh, because of this, because of these health and safety concerns? What will take time? What will happen now? What will happen in the long term? So Vaibhav. Uh... Yeah. Uh, so Vivek, uh, looking at uh, overall health and safety and the post in the post COVID world, the folk as as a lot of other participants have been telling, the focus first will be cost optimization for all the companies. Uh, then probably uh, companies, depending upon the how the cost factor is there of the company they will think on where to invest in automation as as itc guys have rightly put in 
and and i i completely agree with him that uh, during it is when you automate something uh, the general myth is you reduce people i don't think so it is like that because in in lot of surveys uh, if you see uh, when you automate something uh, you know for example uh, your your skill set needs to go up as he says as as itc guy has said very rightly or vijay has said very rightly uh, uh, where uh, you know you in the survey it has shown that you know your skill set has to be improved and basically <clears throat> your your the, the uh, reduction of people is not that much but you know your skill set has to be increased to the uh, attuned to that automation that is one thing now health and safety now why you automate and now for of uh, as you know we are into pharma companies we have to follow very strict as compared to other industries we have to follow very strict norms say for example in pharma we call it as cgmp good manufacturing practices where we already you know it is not even not just poll uh, not just uh, during covid but earlier also because the the pharma products or the food products, they are consumed they go inside the body they are consumed by the people they are not utilized so the safety aspect is the first thing that we look into and then comes the efficacy part of the overall uh, uh, set of things so here so that's how our, our entire planning will go on the basis of safety say for example and and in safety what will happen is from time to time if you see during covid apart from the manufacturing practice good manufacturing practices that a supp good supply chain follows at the same time time to time uh, the ministry of home affairs has been coming out with proper guidelines for the manufacturers and how they should what all they should do in operations and that needs to be looked into that need to be discussed that need to be probably amalgamated with your internal processes and that is how you can actually uh, i see you can you can move ahead because i see that intelligence intelligent planning tools can product for me i feel this new It's it's nothing. This is time. See, so if you really want want to make some that you want to make a change in your product, this is the time. Food had provided a fantastic positive. Uh, Weber, can I can I stop you because I think there is a disturbance. So I'm able to hear you clearly. So I think there's probably a connection issue. We can't see your face moving or. Uh, So there, there seems to be connection issues. So I'll, I'll quickly go to Mohit. Mohit, if you could share your thoughts, and when yeah. the connection for Weber becomes better, we'll come back to Weber. Sure. So very well captured uh, by all the previous panelists, and I will just summarize with few live examples. Now, if you look at the pharma sector or even the medical devices, what we are seeing is that customer would like now a minimum touch point. so they don't want you to come every now and then and do that face to face conversation now what happened it's a big change now all of a sudden everybody feels a pressure that now they do not have a connection how then did materialize the connection as well as the outcome of those discussions so what this resulted in that there are three type of solutions which i would like to emphasize and this is more towards the forward integration which i am seeing is arising because of the health and safety concern one uh, because most of the companies so far have done fantastically well on the backward integration with the suppliers with the warehouses with 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 all my ems as well as manufacturing but what happened to my forward which is my true customer so what is happening there are three kind of trends one companies have their own integrated solutions to connect to distributor very lengthy process if somebody decides now it's not going to take off in the next say 2 to 3 years it is having its own fruition and implementation time there are second type of solutions which i'm saying is intermediate to relieve this concerns of of uh, health and safety is the intermediaries 
we have seen so many good partners available in the market these days who have brilliant softwares to connect and become an intermediary to organization and make you an end to end connected organization now the power is how you connect when you are not able to connect physically are you able to connect virtually the third thing which one of our panel analyst is an expert and i will not touch more on that is the blockchain where blockchain is like it's in its ferment stage wherein it's about the secure transaction from from all all the partners but in summary if i would like to summarize my take away that it poses a very good opportunity but if i say the full fledged automations absolutely it's not the right stage and why i am saying that is also because i have few examples the countries which have started recovering on covid they have shown that the pre covid during covid and post covid the automation usage has started dropping again back to the manual right. so it's it's a balance which we need to look at and as this vijit very very rightly said the goals have to be clearly understood and communicated before such decisions are taken right uh, thanks mohit and uh, uh, we will continue for the next one uh, because of the time uh, uh, planning that we have uh, and and mohit you mentioned that you've noticed uh, in other countries where uh, you know, things are returning in a different shape and form so this is what i wanted to pick the brains of the other two panelists on what are the international best practices that they are seeing on automation uh, and uh, what can be implemented by developers three pill firms and uh, occupiers in india and what is the experience what are they seeing internationally and uh, what we can use in india so my question to both uh, abhijit uh, and vinith and if abhijit you could start uh, sure. what are you seeing internationally yeah, so I- Uh, you know, it's an interesting question. I've been asked this question earlier also. That what is the what are the major what are the major changes post you know post the situation right now, COVID situation? And I you know I think technology is one of the big changes that is going to be there. We are not a technology company; we're an infrastructure company. But I think six months ago that reality came into us that you cannot split the two. You cannot split the two. so we have uh, we ourselves uh, came out and thought what is it that we need to do on the infrastructure side like i can speak on the infrastructure what happens into the warehouses where you know where uh, the actual operators will will be able to give their insights on so we have uh, you know we used uh, we use bots we use ai sensors eit and we actually created an esr app which uh, which we launched about which we launched about a month and a half ago so basically integrating you know combining ai uh, ai and sensors uh, we have created this app which really makes it a contactless you know a contactless management in terms of managing all the infrastructure of the park how people are invited into the industrial or the, or the warehousing parks how the utilities can be booked how the grievances can be you know can be you know can be actually can be actually registered once you come into the park you don't need to stop and ask the guards you don't need to be finding your way so there is a way finding tool you know onto that and how also people are really you know uh, really come in your health assessments etc so this uh, this technology is something that we work with the company we work three four months we put a lot of effort to actually be able to to be actually able to you know have have it out so we feel that technology is something now that you cannot uh, you know you cannot run an operation both inside a warehouse as well as outside the warehouse so this has been a good uh, this has been a good experience for us our clients are very excited about it you know our uh, you know so uh, yeah so which is uh, which is what i have to say so it's a start from us there will be much more there will be much more uh, yeah Do you want to add to okay that? yeah yeah certainly so thanks mr malkani for mostly covering the digital part uh, of automation in the warehouse i would uh, slightly speak about the digital part so the digital is just a fusion of the physical me- machines or the mechanical mechatronic world and the digital piece together and i'll speak about uh, when it comes to the international best practices i'll speak about five stacks here with very practical uh, solutions Uh, which our audience can think of adopting uh, and with a few tips and these tips and the solutions and the timelines that i speak are something by which 
we can live by. So this is not just a hypothesis, but this is a very, very practical thing. So there are this basically five stackable groups when it comes to the digital uh, automation. Uh, number one is the lowest hanging fruit is the inbound and the outbound doc automation. Uh, because I mean, we all know they are docs are the you know critical parts of our warehouse, mostly neglected. Uh, the investment is relatively the lowest because when I say five stackable, obviously the investment goes on increasing with each stack. So when you start with uh, doc automation with low investment, so for example, first of all, with doc automation, your num total number of docs reduces to almost one third of your present uses, usage if you're in a manual doc operations. On top of that, the cost of automating one single doc after reducing the number of docs to about one third, the cost of automating of, or making a doc digital is in the range of 20 lakh rupees, which is not a big deal. Thirdly, the ROI of automating a doc digitally comes to less than two years and we stand guaranteed by that. The second stack is sorting and picking automation. It has moderate investment. The investment starts from about a crore and a half and for very high end sorting of like 30,000 pieces per hour throughput, it can go up to 15 crores. Uh, the ROI is medium. When I say medium, about less than three years. The next stack is storage and uh, retrieval solutions. So here the investment is slightly high, but for example, if you are, if, if the land that you own is somewhere in the vicinity of cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, like it's something like Bivandi, where the land is expensive. And then imagine your automated storage going about 40 meters tall, where you are just claiming your air rights then your ROI is really condensed down to maybe even three to four years. Uh, so the investment typically starts at about 10 crores in case of an automated storage and retrieval system. And it can go up to 30, 40, 50 crores, depending upon what kind of a storage uh, you are creating. The next fourth stack is the value added automation, which is things like measurement of packages, labeling, packing. Uh, so these value added automations, they have also relatively low investment and quick ROI. And the last and the very compelling fifth stack is the warehouse operating system or the warehouse control system. It's a compelling piece because this is that piece of software which connects your physical mechatronic machine to your digital, pure digital platform, which is the ERP or the WMS. And a small tip or an advice that I can give our audience is that if any investment that you are making in the future doesn't have a piece of software in it, when I, when I say any investment, it is about any machines or any automation, doesn't have a piece of software embedded into it. If it doesn't talk seamlessly to your ERPs and WMSs, then you are investing in a junk. So yeah, you know, yeah, under the best practices. I just want to add here because Vivek, I think it's quite clear after speaking to everybody out here that technology is no more going to be a luxury. You know, I'm not speaking about just infrastructure, sure. I'm about both, uh, both infrastructure and operations. I think it's very clear gone of those days where you can run this operation without technology. So I think that's now it is uh, literally, you know, technology is something that is going to run it. Now, how much technology you use, you use, how much you want to start with, how much you want to end with is something that you need to strategize. But it is, it is something that we have all, we have all realized that it's here to stay and we have to adopt. Perfect. I, I think uh, everybody will agree with that. And I would now request, we are almost uh, in the first phase of, complete the first phase of questions. Uh, if I could request lead exhibitions to share uh, the question for the audiences. We have hundreds of participants. Uh, so if I could request them to put the first Q&A where the audiences can give their opinion on three questions that we will ask them. So there you go. These are the three questions on your screen. Everybody can uh, uh, give a quick answer. We'll probably get a response in you know, 30 seconds, hopefully. And uh, we'll share that as well with everybody else. This is all you know, hundreds and hundreds of you who are uh, currently doing this. Yeah, so I've given my response, but uh, let's see. It will take a while for... Well, 600, 700 people to give their responses. That's a lot of people. I think this is a very good survey, actually. Uh, we'll get to know from, and here are the results. So, 
Do you think COVID-19 will increase automation in logistics? 70%. Overwhelming, yes. And the second one is yes, but not immediately. This is exactly what the panelists are talking about. Higher efficiency, 50% of the people are saying the automation logistics most effective is that higher efficiency and that reducing lead times is a, is a close second. Payback period, here's the interesting thing. We had asked five to eight, which is historical data, but everybody ends to agree it's three to five years or one to three years, depending on which technology that we are using. So I think this is a very good uh, insight from uh, uh, the hundreds of participants who are there. And I think this is really helpful for everyone. Thank you very much for everybody uh, giving your responses. Uh, let me move to the second part. Um, and here, we'll try to mix it up a bit. Let's have multiple people debate and discuss. And I'm picking up for the conversation we've had so far. So automation increases profitability, reduces lead time, uh, scale of peaks, uh, you know, and of course, increases safety. If, if you could have people from the panel, let's say, you know, Adil and Mohit and Ravi and Vinit, share their personal experiences in terms of what they've done on ground in India. And you know, examples, which will then people can pick up as the best practices uh, going forward for India. So maybe Anil, you could start and we can then go to Mohit and Ravi and Vinit. Uh, sure, sure, Will. Thanks. Uh, what I'll do is I'll share my personal experience uh, and I'll talk about two uh, automation projects that I had, uh, undertook. So in one of my earlier stints, you know, uh, we were actually sourcing and we had to deploy a lot of uh, devices, which is mobiles in the market when I was with uh, Tata's, right? So there's one project that uh, uh, we had to take was the inbound of these handsets uh, while all of us would be aware of IMEI, right? All device have IMEI, and these are unique to each device. Now, these, these IMEIs need to be captured when you're taking them in, and you, they need to be captured when you're sending them out. So these need to be tracked from regulatory perspective also, because these are devices which can be misused. So there's a huge amount of data management also which had to be done, right? So to manage this particular aspect, you know, uh, we had set up an automation project for inbound of these devices because these were coming into uh, lakhs and lakhs of this thing and uh, that we had to manage the data. So I had undertaken one project for that. And then in my recent stint also, uh, we have taken a project uh, for catering to the SIM uh, production, right? So the SIMs that we go and procure in the market. So they, these, these are packed. So these need to be packed again, based on the, you know, the SIM number. So these are called RSN numbers, which need to be mapped. So these are the two projects which I've taken, undertaken over a period of time. And what I've actually seen is that, you know, uh, there's been huge learning from these. So they've been unique in nature. Uh, as such, what it led to was that lead time, there was definite reduction there because earlier an activity which we would do in about, uh, you know, four hours, we could actually finish off in an hour and that also I think I've lost a little. Yeah, yeah even... Uh... Yeah. So uh, can we move to, let's say, Ravi, if you could uh, you know, share your thoughts and we'll probably go back to more than after that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Vivek. Yeah. So uh, to putting the context right, every panel had a very good uh, inputs in covering. But, you know, what we're seeing is overall, you know, post-COVID and, you know, adop adoption of existing the automation within warehouse and the connectivity between the ecosystem partners is um, is there in place and automation within is there and we understand there is a payback as well but what we could uh, see is a connectivity between the ecosystem partners and uh, one of the point Ari was mentioning is one of the project he was handling is the track and trace and the related so it's purely tech and infra driven programs coming up uh, solidly you know to do both uh, you know as mohit mentioned earlier they both uh, um, backward integration and forward integration to have seamless you know, customer experience, as well as bring agility into the process, right? Whatever we implement, the agility is a core 
um, is not in the system alone, in the process, the connectivity, and and, and doing you know, business in real time. You know? So what the technology helps is like, we are seeing uh, the, the traction in some of the areas like blockchain of things that you know, amalgamation of you know, blockchain and IoT, which emphasizes that the device itself, a smart device is a sensor, um, then you have an infrastructure as a smart, for example, a gateway unit and a cloud integrated together. And you uh, know the providers like uh, you know, Reliance and the, the who provides the center network to connect the ecosystem partners, um, you know, across 3PL and then the distributor, the manufacturer, which gives payway, you know, in a, in a sector. So what we are working today is to come up with a cold chain what network, a perishable goods and pharma, which is, you know, if I talk about, you know, one expert, uh, one of our panel expert talked about the, you know, how, um, you know, um, that sector is very, uh, you know, compliant and related to, you know, uh, uh, distribution and uh, fulfillment, right? So we see, you know, we see um, large traction and, you know, there is an amendment coming up in, in cold chain India, entire logistics supply chain amendment. And uh, uh, the, the programs, what we are doing is are evolving. However, the IoT centric have uh, seen production uh, in terms of track and trace and you know in terms of uh, uh, productivity but blockchain as uh, you know mohit mentioned we are evolving however we are towards pilot not in production in some of the use cases yeah over to mohit all right so thanks thanks uh, ravi and anil for the background so just to add again uh, some of the things which i see are the game changers in the automation and and those should be actually the vision of the leadership. And, and why I say that? Because if a vision includes clearly smart definition, which includes very specific of what we want to achieve, we can measure that very clearly. We can achieve it realistically. And finally, it is time bound. If those parameters I understand for my organization, where it's going to impact the most. And I pick those pieces is where all the things which Vivek highlighted, whether profitability, safety, everything will be taken care of. Now, one more aspect I would like to add from the examples I've seen over the last 13, 14 years of my experience is that connectivity, which even our one of our panel, panelists really talk about. So what happened is that, let's say you have a physical machine, you have WMS, you have ERP, and we want to make it as a seamless connection through web methods and kind of a real time. But, but truly speaking, as an organization, we need to believe and think, is it really makes sense for me to have a real time costly solution or can I have a solution kind of a STP kind of a transfer, which still serves me the purpose because I may need to run it say once a day, twice a day or thrice a day, but still I have the most updated information. So, so the decision is more on those lines, like what level of automation are you looking at? Understanding that there are solutions which can still suffice the organization needs um, by having a mid kind of an outcome. Now, I was also analyzing like what all are going to happen in the next say three to five years. A uh, few things which I would like to add, which, which are easy to adopt and which at least are in the stage of early adopters. And those includes cloud computing and storage. Amazing solutions available. Every organization can take a clue of it. What is available? Amazing service providers available. And, and, and it can sit on whatever the ERP you are having. It's not dependent that I will sit only on this ERP. Second thing, the internet of things, uh, which talks about like wherein you have interconnected objects. And, and I'm not talking about very high end solutions, but I'm talking about like simple sensors, like RFID sensors or barcode sensors, and simply it will automate your picking and processing process amazing at high speed and very low cost. Few other things which I would like to add is predictive analytics. Very, very, if I say on the maturity graph, uh, it's not, I can say the earlier adopters are not much. And people feel that if I have a report, this is predictive, but actually predictive is not that. Predictive is where you can simulate when you have an interconnected system. And unless you have that input, it's all about business intelligence and not predictive. 
now now so those are the things i thought of adding and lastly the transmat transport management softwares amazing solutions available not costly adaptable for indian environment and that's where i thought of sharing what may come and be picked from the global best practices thanks mohit um so vivek i'll uh, address those four precise points that you just mentioned right increase profitability reduce lead times scaling up for peaks and increase safety and i'll speak with reference to only two examples of each one so these are live cases uh, whose proofs can be seen out there in the field working so number one is profitability as i mentioned a four crore project end of the line done for itc pune or ranjanga paid back in just 1.5 years uh, after 1.5 years that four crores only becomes profit uh fsc in nagpur most of us know fsc has one of the most automated warehouses in nagpur in india and the last year commissioned only one inbound automation system amongst other systems this inbound automation system alone brought down their inventory by one day and if you can imagine the lakhs of sqs that fsc handles and the millions of eaches that they have in a massive warehouse of about 4 lakh square feet uh, and with five floors one day of a inventory reduction is profit it adds to profit the second is uh, lead times here i will give the example of india post who approached us for their sorting solutions what would normally take them about 35 people per shift to sort about 15000 packages during their peak time in their parel sort center we brought it down to 5 hours with just 10 people so 5 hours is the lead time reduction another example is again at fsc for the dock management where we installed our dispatch management system and from 4 hours of the truck loading the tedious truck loading procedure that they had that time came down to about 40 minutes so that is about the lead times imagine the kind of fleet that was released which was otherwise just standing idle there the third point is scaling up for peaks and this is the easiest to answer uh, we have been doing automation with amazon and flipkart for the last 7 years now and when you say peaks i think e-commerce industry is the epitome of peaks and uh, so just two words answers the question of scaling up for peaks and the last question is safety so in safety i'll give you two examples one is a uh, safety for the people in the long term for example when the boxes come out from the packing area and they have been palletized a box weighing anything about 8 kilos and repetitive picking and palletizing of the boxes has a very grave impact on the backbone of the people who are working there it's like a slow poison it acts very bad on their spinal cords or, or on their backbone over a period of 6 to 8 to 10 months and these are very poor people no medical no medical uh, reimburses them for the damage to their backbones and this is a gross violation that is happening in the industry of you know safety which is unnoticed here we have installed a robotic palletizer at haldiram nagpur as well as haldiram delhi where a robot picks up and places the uh, creates a stack of the boxes on the pallets and then the pallets go automatically to storage another example of short term safety is which is under poc right now at fsc which is we have an artificial intelligence machine learning based based uh, camera system which is constantly watching the dock area the especially the loaders inside the truck and if they are not wearing their high visibility jackets or their helmets it is the video analytics which highlights that so and so person at so and so dock is not wearing his safety gear and that becomes very easy for the uh, enforcement people to quickly go and intervene and make that people safe uh, make that person safe, safety compliant so these were the examples i think that's a lot My of examples. very good case studies which everybody can learn from now i'll try to take it back to on ground reality and my quest next question is to abhijit because uh, finally all of these things are being executed on a site so abhijit when let's say you are negotiating the cost of construction of a warehouse and the occupiers come to you and say these are the automated things i want to get done for docks for height so do you see occupiers willing to give premium for these investments that you are doing so that your box is ready for the automated facility do you see they coming from let's say the end users the uh, the fmcg firms or the e-commerce firm or do you see three peels doing it what's been your experience yeah. 
So I think at the moment, uh, if you personally ask me, I think it's, uh, it's a little too early to say. Uh, we have not really done investments in technology on our park to really, to really look at, uh, will it really give us extra rental values? But I think technology, such technology that we have launched are going to be actually the new, the new way. It's going to be a standard specification. So I think rather than premiums only, it is going to be the new norm, the new, you know, the new way of really running an operation. So I think most of it that does not enable technology will become obsolete. So clearly, I think post, you know, post COVID, I think class B uh, warehouses where you really cannot have technology, you're not technology enabled, you're not building your warehouses or building your common infrastructure which doesn't help the 3PL or any of the company to be able to install technology or to be able, will, will absolutely be obsolete. So we, uh, while we launched the app, like in like, like a small example, while we were about to launch our, our app to you know, be able to do that, we spoke to many companies. We spoke to about 50, 60 companies. They were all very excited about it. They're very excited about it. But I think for us, like I said, it's a new norm. I mean, that's the way business is going to be running, uh, you know, running from here, you know. So for us, every, stand, every building that we make going forward here will have this technology enabled, the warehousing right from the gatehouse to the entry. I think everything has changed. In the last two, three months, we have made a lot of changes to our specifications like, uh, you know, like Mohit, Vineet, everybody talked about. There are a lot of technologies that the end users will be requiring. So technology really has a lot of, uh, and you know, so all those changes need to be made to made at the infrastructure st stage also. But in the long run, in the long run, we are very, very sure that premiums will come. But I know, and you know, it will, you know, it's it's here to stay. Yep. And in fact, uh, one could deduce or hypothesize that the downfall of grade B warehouses, which is already happening, will probably get accentuated because of. Uh, post-COVID scenario and a need for more automation and a better quality asset where automation can take place. So I think that could be one outcome of COVID that will just speed it up. Now, let's let's have a specific conversation on, on supply chain. Let's talk about the, the last mile supply chain. And then this is my question to uh, uh, Badrina Ryan from Swiggy, uh, who are experts on the last mile, and Ms. Swiggy from the technology side. How do you think tech-enabled last mile supply chain will look like in India post-COVID in the near future? So, Badrina, Badrina, first uh, to you, over to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, Vivek. So, as uh, we are discussing with uh, various panelists and all, this is the uh, uh, future in this era, uh, era of technological innovation. Uh, revol uh, revolution is the way world use the function. It is impacted every other industry. We know, uh, uh, and the, it transforming the unprecedented at an unprecedented rate logistic sector is also uh, disrupted by technological transformation and it is not helping in reducing friction in the world of logistics but also making efficient and automated process the new age startups uh, uh, back uh, backed by technological advancements are unable to adapt emerging uh, imperative such as uh, agility, customer centricity, uh, uh, need of uh, constantly innovate and uh, better and precise error-free solutions. Uh, the use of technology enable uh, drive efficiencies at lower cost. Uh, and Vinit was giving some example of Haldiram and all that uh, robotic solution and all. These are the uh, things which I see uh, uh, the companies are leading to uh, the digitalization of the sector will also help customer to track uh, their shipment at a real time basis, reduce inefficiencies in the system, streamline the operations, uh, uh, switching uh, it from old method uh, of tracking orders on paper to digital platform will leave lesser room for the error. Today, for example, mobile uh, based applications have uh, made convenient booking in terms of ordering the uh, uh, stuffs online from uh, looking at uh, groceries or you name anything, uh, it is on your fingertips. So uh, I would uh, uh, basically uh, tell in four areas, broadly classi uh, classified 
which I feel uh, are core critical factors. One is uh, data automation and transparency. So data has always been an integral part of the logistics sector. Uh, uh, new advances in data collection, analysis, offers opportunities for the companies to meet their goals uh, uh, in the better way. Uh, strategically, data is used for optimizing the route networks. Uh, uh, this one additional for real time uh, uh, tracking the shipment, this one. And uh, with the data uh, 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 is a, uh, the way I look at the uh, companies like even uh, Swiggy, the way uh, Cloud Kitchen business, the way we are trying to this one, it is based on the, all the data where the area, which area uh, has uh, uh, a customer visibility. So data plays a very critical uh, uh, role in deciding or in a decision making and, uh, and also uh, transparency. So basically giving a customer a visibility on a real time basis, where is the my shipment? Where is the my uh, order? Where is the my food coming uh, from? At where is it is standing? So uh, with AI and uh, 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 use of this technology has going to play a critical role. Second uh, factor is uh, innovative option for physical transportation, like use of robots, drones, and Vinit has given so many examples uh, in terms of uh, using uh, 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 physical transpo uh, uh, transportation like the drones and all used, uh, the, that is the future which I see. Uh, it uh, will not only a cost effective, but it will also reduce the amount of spend, manpower, uh, fuel, etc. For provide and also it is providing a marketing edge to a few e-commerce players. Uh, the third important factor which I uh, see is the digital platform. So uh, in on a digital by enabling sharing capital expenses, sharing the uh, warehouses, sharing the uh, uh, capex and all. So uh, uh, it enable enabling capex free players to enter ecosystem, but also opens up a new business models opportunities today in new age startups, uh, enable business carry out a last mile deliveries, this has opened whole new segment to a logistics sectors. And the fourth and important is the new product, the way uh, uh, techniques and method in the manufacturing and all uh, adapting with a different use of technologies. So uh, in my opinion, uh, in, so in a nutshell uh, 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 to talk about, so data automation, uh, innovative options for physical transportation, digital platforms and new production methods. So these four areas where I see a future and the companies are trying to tend to, and this is how uh, I feel future will move to. Vishwajit, what do you have to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Badri was kind of bang on this. See, the last mile is all about customer experience. Okay. And, and the whole customer experience comes from the pillar to get to, to that level essentially is the creating the whole value out of the data. We have huge amount of data uh, in, in, in supply chain. We always had. Now, how do we create insight of it? How do we, I mean, some, I think uh, Mohit talked about uh, the whole predictive part of it. I mean, look at Amazon. Okay. Uh, we, the, the, when you purchase something, it proposes something which might be similar or you, you may kind of uh, look for. So this, there's a huge amount of AI goes behind it. Okay. And then it's, it's all about giving you a different level of experience. Okay, Amazon uh, experience, I mean, that's something which has been uh, an epitome of, of an customer experience, which has been kind of recorded most of our times. Now, and the third thing, I think, uh, once again, I think Badri mentioned about it is, is bringing it ecosystem, bringing the whole ecosystem, creating a platform approach. You can't win this battle alone. I mean, that's, 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 the, that's the century we are living in. So how do I how do I bring various partners together, share the data within ourselves? I think once again we talked about blockchain as a technology enabler for that. And and how do we how do we leverage that? I mean, uh, I'll just give an example uh, from a shipping industry perspective. Okay, which where they're looking at uh, the, the challenges in in the international shipping is 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 essentially the time. Okay, and then the huge amount of documentations involved, multiple partners uh, bearing the 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 not just the customer and the and the, the buyer there are huge amount of uh, various other enablers are involved how do i kind of bring them together 
uh, in a very seamless way and 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 make the whole system works in a more efficient way and and uh, and, and 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 in that process i save a lot of money and save, gain a lot of efficiency along with that now and 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 if you also look at most of the startups what they are looking i mean they are they primarily the tech companies who are getting into this last mile of the supply chain i'll put the the uh, the areas where the workers are kind of going on on three different areas in terms of the whole maturity of uh, of the technology so number one essentially from a concepts okay the concepts when I mean, we are talking about the autonomous uh, delivery vehicle there are a lot of concepts which have been tried we're, we're uh, looking at drone delivery some of the um, kind of uh, uh, some of the organizations of in india also have been trying about it working on this area robotics using robotics in last mile so there are a lot of concepts which are which are in place few of the areas what i call is developing tech technologies so developing technologies like droids okay used to we have seen the first droid in 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 the sci-fi movie of uh, star wars and all now it, these are being tried out in in supply chain in in real way uh, we are talking about a whole uh, van and road drone integration okay from a last mile perspective okay we are talking about smart door lock or or a or a trunk delivery which amazon had uh, uh, done it in 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 one of the us market in a uh, uh, couple of, i think last year itself then the third layer what i call is a scalable innovations okay uh, that's something which is like uh, the autonomous vans or or use of uh, electric vehicles okay in and 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 agvs and other things and of course uh, there are other technologies like blockchain ai iot which are going to be the backbone for for getting into this this level so so yes a lot of work is is ongoing in this particular area and and going to be the i mean the most exciting uh, changes what we will be expecting in in the last mile i think that is like crystal ball gazing in terms of what going to potentially happen in this space and we know we heading in that direction now my my next question is to dr webber and uh, to vijay uh, you know we know we going there what is that one thing that probably needs to be done uh, this was you mentioned sharing of data for example what is that one thing that needs to be done to make digital logic logistics indispensable to the functioning of the economy what is that one game changer that you think if it is done by everyone will change the game for digital logistics uh, dr webber over to you yeah so uh, uh, sorry for the disturbance earlier uh, you know just to answer your question on the digital logistics if you if you ask me digital digital logistic as of now is definitely indispensable because i i will i will entirely i will bring it from the healthcare point of view as i was to tell you that already a uh, pharma companies see uh, make the manufacturing process in a way that is limited amount of human intervention or there is any touch to the to the actual product that is the way the entire process chain goes from the operations point of view so after this entire covid part this became this is now becoming too strong now to really you know uh, look at how apart from earlier gmps how we can actually inculcate or in, uh, use more of technology i'm not saying removing the people but more of technology more of digitalization part say for example now common also in stake and uh, this thing we are uh, and, uh, and 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 actually now using from a supply chain point of view artificial intelligence and robotic technologies for uh, inside operations or supply chain point of view so this is now as i see as we move ahead is is absolutely indispensable because as you see even i was seeing the survey part of it that we did quickly among the people that we have 69% people have said that digitalization is the end thing or it is it is it is it is a necessity so there itself in our small population here where we are discussing when we see that 67 to 70% people feel the digitalization is important then definitely this is this is the this is going to be the next and from the healthcare point of view this is going to we will we are already into digitalization and no touch kind of an operations 
where we move into the next level after the post covid like uh, vijay what do you have to say to that hello i thank you vic so as um, as rightly said now i i just want to throw a light on the on the place that you know india from if i take about last 4 5 years india is coming on a base of very very low internet penetration low uh, digitization low automation the mode of you know the entire logistics supply chain uh, uh, portfolio now a recent study which was basically done by the mckinsey and then they also showed that india is basically coming off from a low base to a second fastest digital adopter among the 17 major digital uh, economies so this was a very very uh, you know major break uh, through studies which was which was mentioned that why india is going to be a, a future uh, in terms of the digitization automation in terms of the entire economy uh, is concerned and as you all that we are the second in the world who are uh, using the mobile technologies in the world of china these are the these are the uh, you know facts which are uh, which are clearly showing that our economy is definitely going uh, towards automation and digitization in the future there are lot of things that we are talking about iot's we are talking about artificial intelligence we are talking about internet of things we are talking about cloud based activities we are talking about robotics we are talking about automation um, now one basic thing that we need to understand as a business that you know even in today's uh, uh, business scenarios the reality is that most of the old you know uh, rules of logistics and supply chain are still valid and have a very high stake uh, comparatively if i see and if i say it just moves faster and becomes more uh, you know our logistics become more faster more integrated more inter inter interconnected processes uh, with uh, you know a full information in terms of data and service sources that is our core priority as of now as well and that is how we are going to make our you know as our prime minister also said that you know, we want to become a inter, inter, you know independent uh, you know business uh, country where we can have our own uh, setup of things in terms of the entire independent supply chain as well now looking at these scenarios it is it is very much indispensable that you know india should also become a digital uh, and you know automated uh, in terms of the entire logistics and supply chain uh, you know economy uh and then these are also uh, clearly stated that you know proof and logistics uh, and uh, the digital transformation is occurring in the several areas now how do we need to do it that we need to have you know basically the innovative uh, technology in terms of data analytics in terms of internet of things or the cloud based technology or the automation technology that we have available as of now and then whatever is coming in future in the coming when, uh, you know, maybe one or two years that us or europe countries are talking about and then we should rapidly uh, increase our skill set basically and then adopt the technologies as soon as possible so that we can align the world for uh, the future logistics and supply chain uh, at the same time you know there was there was an there was a time when uh, though i should not say it but if we talk about supply chain most of the ceos of the organization or the series, you know the senior management of the organization never believed you know unless until some some issues or problems happened in supply chain and then you know supply chain department comes out with some sort of solutions and then the importance and being felt in the uh, in the department and then uh, the cost as a being uh, put in the in the uh, in the function right now is the time when people have started people have started thinking on this and then they have started allocating particular costs uh, in terms of automation or digitization and then people have started putting up approximately around 20% of their uh, digital transformation cost uh, separately allocated uh, in the entire uh, you know digital transformation cost of the organization so i think i spoken from the heart eh, that because I, earlier it used to happen because of there's a problem only then you go for automation and now we are talking about that it is Absolutely. a standard it's a given every company is doing it so i think that's like a that's that's how the industry is mature that's how you head in the right direction so uh, i think it's time for us to uh, do the next participant poll uh, if i would request reed to do the next poll and quick time check after that we have another 15 minutes so uh, 10 minutes so we will not be able to probably cover all of them but over to the poll so how much do you think covid 19 will impact logistics in india yeah uh, minimum impact moderate impact by when will logistics supply chains in india get back to post covid level uh, and the third one is uh, 
what will be the largest impact, uh, one largest impact on supply chains in India due to COVID. So let's see what the result comes out. And as I said, a quick time check. We are at 12.10. We probably might not be able to do all the questions. In India. And uh, yeah, there you go. So what is the impact? High impact. Okay, so almost 50% people assume it's high impact to moderate impact. Uh, which is understandable. When will they come back to normal? End of 2020 or first half of 2021? I think that's also a fairly realistic estimate. And labor shortage and oper increase in operational costs have been the two largest impacts. I think this just reaffirms uh, everything that uh, we are, we've been hearing, seeing, and, and, and witnessing. So I, I'll have to, uh, based on the schedule, I'll have to start Q&A session by about 12.15 so that we can end by 12.30 and we meet the schedule. So we had a lot of questions. We might, might not be able to take all of them. Now, uh, uh, let me again stick, stay to the supply chain and go into in detail in that one. So we, let's discuss omni-channel distribution. So when can we see or will we see omni-channel distribution in India in the near future and, and or will we continue with the old age method? So what, what is the opinion? And let's go, go again to uh, uh, Mohit and Anil in terms of, you know, what are they seeing on ground uh, regarding omni-channel distribution? Mohit? Okay. So, all right. So um, now I would like to highlight one aspect that when we say omni-channel and then you also have multi-channel, there's a very, very fine line between the two. So, so omni-channel is where like you are focusing on customer experience, enlarging customer experience by optimizing your channels. While, while in the case of multi-channel, you try to provide the same experience through multiple channels. So it is, it is very customer-centric approach when we talk it in omni-channel. Now, if I really say how the industry has been so far in omni-channel, and primarily if I look at there are two particular verticals, retail and e-commerce, who could be able to leverage this kind of a strategy, uh, and especially because of the scale and the volumes. But during COVID times, I have seen realistically how this omni-channel is also used in pharma and medical devices. Now, what is happening is that, but that requires a consolidation. So one consolidation was provided by GSD. I think now the second wave of consolidation will begin wherein you will have big players servicing customer and then they provide those different modes to provide different experience to the same customer. So customer can then order and say that you, uh, you deliver it at my store. Or the customer can say that it's fine. I know your cost is higher. I can pick on my own. The third option can be that I can, uh, I, 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 so, so these are the various things uh, I foresee. And, but the major part which I would like to emphasize is that consolidation. Unless that happens, technology enabled solutions and the visibility, because that should have a connected visibility of inventory, your order management system. These two are the backbone of running a successful omni channel process in India. Anil, your thoughts to this? Uh, thanks, Vivek. I completely agree with Mohit, you know, uh, so omni-channel technology is going to play a major role, but I would like to break up into two parts. So let's first look at from the customer perspective, right, on all of us as an end user, right? Today, in COVID days, what do we need? We need supplies as on immediate basis, right? We are not actually willing to wait and we're not willing to expose ourselves as well right so uh, from that perspective i would first as a user you know try and order something online and get something delivered so that the contact is minimum to me but having said that now there are certain essentials i would still need which i am not getting through an online mechanism right so that's where i would also need to step out for a limited period and get from my Kirana and Pop also. So from the customer perspective, it is becoming a reality sooner than later. Now, let's come from the business standpoint of view, right? Business standpoint of view also. So I'll talk from uh, the existing 
thing network that we only have right and you must have heard geomart operations also coming in and start we starting so that again we from business point of view we need to reach customer immediately so once the technical technology piece has been put in place then we are using all mechanisms all places where inventory is to service the customer so that is becoming a reality and more and more and it's not true for us but for if you see across the chain that's how it's happening so even amazon will probably stand up and leveraging on to the existing channel of big bazaar and then delivering it so that is becoming a reality so i think that is going to further get enhanced only the time right uh, now uh, vinay do you have to add anything to that because then after this we will go to the last uh, summary for everyone we will both have covered it beautifully so i would just say that the change uh, is inevitable there is no alternative i think they have there's no option rather and we are seeing the sprouts coming up so amazon tying up with fsc or reliance tying up with even the small time groceries and both have just covered that so thanks uh, one more thing uh, the same way you know itc has tied up with dominos or amway yeah. in the final days way so these are some some other examples you know i right. want to go to last one right, right, right. yeah so uh, as a way to summarize it before we go to the third poll and the q and a if i could request each panelist uh, in either one word or one sentence uh, give one biggest technology trend that in a, their opinion will reshape logistics industry in india in the immediate future let's say 2020 2021 considering where we are what is that one thing and if i could start with uh, uh, batrina rai and if you could just share your thought what is that one technology biggest trend which will reshape logistics and industry industry in india in the immediate future in one word vivek one one word sentence uh, yeah. uh, i feel digital platform is the way ahead uh, so in one word digital platform will shape up the uh, logistics future for india mohit uh, i can say seamless visibility uh, ravi uh uh integrated uh, business ecosystem like connected uh, doing business in real time uh, so blocks in iot um, uh, ai centric solutions which could be some any 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 one of this can take centric picture but however uh, we see you know for example uh, as anil mentioned uh, the reliance mart right which is connecting to kirana shop which is fully infrastructure centric plus uh, heavily driven on blockchain iot Vineet, what's your opinion? One word uh, is digital, which is a seamless fusion of uh, physical. <laughs> is that, is that your digital. invention? Did you invent that word? <laughs> I honestly, I overheard it, uh, you know, in one of our international conferences of our technologies. So, okay. yeah, but I like that word. Digital is a is a is a jargon now being used. <laughs> <laughs> so what what what's word 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 for you for which yeah, one I, I i'll call it uh, resiliency uh, the focus will be on on bringing resiliency in the supply chain and multiple technology will come in uh, to use for that yeah uh, vijay what's your thought i think in the current scenario may not be futuristic but in the current scenario it will be rpas sorry i didn't get the, what was it rpas robotics Anil, what do you think? What's your opinion? Yeah, my thoughts echo with Ravi. You know, uh, the visibility, supply chain visibility would be uh, a paramount uh, using technological platforms like IoT and uh, blockchain and GPSs. Abhijit, what's your thought? Yeah, I think the experts have already spoken. Uh, I'll again talk on the infrastructure side, which I, which you know, which which you know, I like you know do. i think we are looking at our biggest challenge is construction at the moment i think post you know post covid labor issues construction issues tech, you know so i think somebody needs to think at uh, construction technology i think that is going to be the next big thing and that's not just warehouses but that's in residential commercial so some of the experts here needs to think of really having a model of creating you know construction technology how do we cut out time how do we handle because this this covid issue is not just going to go you know i'm not very optimistic of it getting ending in one month two months and stuff like that yeah. this is the new way of uh, you know the new way in, in which we all have to get used to so for me my bets on construction technology 
Dr. Weber, what's your thought? Uh, so I have two things. One is, uh, as everybody said, digital is digital is the technology which will play a big role uh, moving forward uh, when we uh, in the way how we do business because uh, in uh, in overall what I see is uh, uh, even even there was uh, I was looking at some survey from Boston Science uh, Consulting Group where 98% said that digital platform is going to be the next thing and it, it is there to be there. Firms needs to embarrass this digital technology uh, for, of uh, this platform and because they will anyway concentrate on the capabilities of their uh, first line um, uh, field force or whatever you call it. Uh -huh. And the next, if you ask me, immediate is digital and next three to five years, if you ask me, it is our, our artificial intelligence and robotic technology that will that is definitely going to take a, people are, or people are going to take companies are going to take a serious look at the, both these technology in next three to five years. So based on everybody's opinion, there are three things emerge uh, supply chain visibility, digital platform and robotics that these are the terms that has come out, which will be the immediate game changes uh, as per ABP's opinion. Thanks everyone for your uh, thoughts and opinions. Now, if I could request Reed to do the last uh, Q and A for the panelists, for the participants, and then we will move into the Q and A. So, the last one is which automation will see highest adoption in India? So there are four categories there. How much premium will you be willing to pay for an automated warehouse? I think most relevant to end users. But let's hear. I think Abhijit will be very keen to understand this. What's happening? And who has invested hope, uh, maximum? Hope it's very high. Yeah. <laughs> but who has invested maximum in automation in India, in your opinion, out of the various stakeholders that are there? Is it specialized firms? Is it developers? Is it end users? Who has done it most? Actually, the automation should reduce the cost of operation. So let's see the result, uh, how what it comes to, and then I'll move to... Okay, so storage and retrieval systems has been, uh, it's been a neck and neck thing, but they are the ones which are uh, highest adoption followed by autonomous, uh, auton autonomous uh, robots uh, and uh, goods to person technology. Uh, five to 10% of it, so uh, that's about it. That's the level you can increase your construction cost to. So that's given you a benchmark. Uh, and some people are looking at 50%. Yeah, good start. Yeah, good start, yeah. And yeah. 3PL firms, so that's that's very interesting. Not the end users, not the occupiers. It's the 3PL firms which are clearly ahead in terms of uh, maximizing automation. Understandable as well, but uh, a lot of inputs which which everybody knows about have become uh, a lot of uh, theories that everybody keep talking about have become confirmed by this poll. Now uh, I'll move on to the. Uh, Q and A's. Thanks, Sakshita, for uh, shortlisting a lot of Q and A's uh, from there. And I'll and I'll uh, some of them are addressed. A few of them are addressed to some specific panelists, but many of them are uh, generic. So whoever wants to respond, I would keep the floor open to them. The first one is, uh, uh, how can automation sustain in MSME industry? Uh, all examples share are a big play. So do you think automation will really take place for MSME in the near future? I think it's a good question. Open to the panelist. Who wants to take that? Let me I, let me take that first. Um, see the in in. Uh, I mean, I, I I started saying that starting small and and kind of uh, expand further so that it start paying for it. Uh, the investment uh, initial investment should not be very high. That's that's one way most of the MMSMEs are looking at. Uh, number two is is the platform story. Okay. Don't try to do build everything together. I mean, insta I mean, there are a lot of lot of cases we have already seen in, in India itself. I mean, I, I don't want to kind of name it right now, but uh, there are certain organizations who are coming forward, bringing multiple players together and and getting into some kind of a digital platform. So that's that's an, another approach which many of these uh, organizations are following, so that the the cost can be shared. Yeah, so my. My, my point of view is uh, there are a few tech startups uh, which are towards from the seed to you know maturity stage. They are providing kind of uh, subscription solution, uh, you know, are they partnering with. Uh, uh, another one I want to like solve is C, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, started by Standard Chartered Bank, which is for predominantly tech, infra tech, uh, tech infrastructure uh, driven platform. 
uh, kind of automating the um, the, the three PL, uh, I would say the influencers, market influencers. So who are in you know medium and uh, small and medium, they they can you know uh, uh, you know connect and and see this kind of platform will help to them. Any other thoughts? Any other uh, opinion on this before I move forward? Yeah. So just a quick one. Uh, MSME should be watchful about the costs of automation also dro dropping drastically. So just be watchful. The good news is just around the corner. The autonomous mobile robots have now come down to about 15 to 18 lakhs a boat, which used to be over 30, 35, 40 lakhs for an EGV. Uh, UR Robotics has come up with robots, although they're in the range of 17 to 18 lakhs, but a robot which you don't need a programmer, a special programmer for that. You, I mean, even a layman. Even a, maybe a, a cook, a housewife can easily program that robot. So, uh, yes, I think that automation opportunity for MSMEs is, is around the corner. But today, yes, it is slightly tough for MSMEs to adopt automation. Very, very good question. Then, uh, very genuine uh, question. Now, here is a question that somebody has asked, which means they were listening. Uh, they asked that as Adil is pointing out that cash flow is hampered, can we do something in the field of decentralization? Using blockchain, just a question we have as Ravi is on the panel. So, question for Yaran. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, because you, as I mentioned earlier, the business agility and business in real time, blockchain in a longer view, long term view, is the, uh, you know, with a combination of other technology like AI and IoT, definitely a platform for, you know, uh, an offer, offering. Uh, but uh, the scope for uh, the futuristic platform will be a subscription based. So when it is coming itself, it's a, uh, you know, um, a, or a transaction based offering. So that's what we are expecting as a market. So it will definitely help you bring in efficiency and lower the cost. That's what I, we see, you know, market perspective, but long term, right? Not immediately because it's in an evolving state. Uh, another question, and again, open to the panel. Uh, thank you, Ravi. Uh, Indian logistics industry has been labor oriented. We have, uh, we're not talking about how many labor heads are engaged in the industry and how technology is going to integrate these heads and create efficiencies. And I remember uh, there was a comment made that uh, tech automation might not reduce labor. Uh, so what's your, uh, you know, what's your thought uh, on this state? Okay, um, this is Vijay. I was just trying to, uh, to answer this question. I'm part of, you know, even lifestyle uh, business which is more of a, Labor intensive activity at a warehouse level earlier, but you know, being uh, technology came into the picture in recent uh, years, it has changed the entire ground. See, earlier uh, people were typically you know picking the stocks uh, on an article level basis, SQ level basis in the warehouses, and then you know dispatching into the into the boxes and then moving it out. Now, with the evolution of economies, maybe uh, in terms of the sortation systems. Uh, put into the warehouses, uh, whether it is 3PL or by the organizations, have changed the entire game. Now, they are put to light systems which have also been installed into the warehouses. These are kind of automation uh, you know, techniques which have been put in the warehouses and then reduced the manpower of maybe more than around 30-40%. You know, and then those are, or, or those will not be even labor intensive activities uh, in the warehouses in future. Because that will be reduced by again 30-40%. Uh, with the skill set manpower being used, uh, the people uh, and the laborers will be using the uh, the skills in these technologies, and then the manpower will be reduced. So these are the examples where definitely labor uh, intensives are you know being uh, removed, and then technology is taking place, but uh, not completely. Definitely, thirty percent manpower is required, uh, being a skill set uh, manpower. Any similar or differing opinion on the panel? I'll just give an analogy. So when uh, people shifted from horses to vehicles, uh, the same question was asked. And today, if you see, the equestrian industry is $300 billion. And uh, compared to one-tenth of the size index, I mean, even if you take the valuation, index valuation of the horse-based horse, horse -based industry. So that same analogy will apply you know, uh, to the future. It's not going away, fine. Uh, I, I think, and again, considering the time, I'll probably ask the last question. And this is this is probably from a entrepreneur or a sharp businessman in the participants. Uh, and I would suggest you put on your Shark Tank hats for this. Uh, what is the, what is your, in your opinion, the opportunity uh, for starting a new business model for on-demand warehouses? 
uh, what's your thought? Uh, and again, open to the panel. Yeah, I mean, I can maybe maybe try to answer that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think I think uh, post uh, this whole uh, situation right now, a few things have changed in the type of warehouses. So it's not only going to be the large, uh, you know, the large DCs or the smaller, uh, you know, hubs and spokes. But I think a lot of in-city distribution warehouses, in-city distribution warehouses is is the new, will be the new trend, you know, will be the new trend. That is uh, one, uh, one big opportunity that is there. But again, uh, it's tough in city is very tough because land acquisition in in city is extremely tough. You will start seeing uh, like in Singapore, Japan, Korea, you will start seeing multi, uh, you know, uh, you know, where warehousing, you'll start seeing multi-level warehousing, which is, which is, which will start now, which will start now on, on demand warehouses. Does he mean speculative buildings? He means spec buildings or what, what does he mean by, you know, I, I will. I would assume this would be for short-term demand, more like the co-working spaces correct. for correct. offices, maybe something like that. The correct. So I think that uh, uh, you know that really relates to the in-city, uh, you know, to the in-city warehousing uh, spaces that that you will start seeing a lot because of the food, because of the e-commerce. I mean, the, you know, uh, again, the growth of exponential growth of e-commerce uh, will happen. I mean, it will happen. So you will have obviously. Amazon, Flipkart, but it is actually going to be the smaller stores is going to be e-commerce is going to become the way of life, right? So, uh, so the whole warehousing types of warehousing, uh, you know, is, is obviously a fantastic opportunity to work with. So All right. He, right, uh, he has the right uh, kind of, you know, idea. And, and we are potentially invested in that business plan. So you know who to call up once you record the business plan together. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And one, yeah. one great business opportunity that uh, I feel can be explored, which is not yet thought is like you have software as a service. Uh, one can consider having automation or offering automation as a service. And in which, for example, if you have a peak season, you can just deploy some more number of robots for a short duration of time. And then after the peak season, those robots can be retracted from a facility and deployed somewhere else. So that makes it like automation as a service instead of automation as a capex, it becomes automation as an opex. This is one untapped business opportunity in this market. Yeah, I think very, very good opportunity. Yeah, excellent. So I think uh, we're done considering the time. There are a few more questions. I had a lot of questions for the panel, which I couldn't go to, but it was a very interesting discussion. Uh, I think just to summarize, uh, we understand in the short term, COVID will probably uh, you know, gain ground, but in the long term and medium term automation uh, will do well. And why? Because the payback period is significantly lower than what the perception is. Uh, the grade B warehouses will probably not be able to support automation. So the, the maturity and the uh, and the move toward grade A will continue. And, and uh, we have to look at this from uh, uh, probably not as a problem driven approach, but could be reached as, a, as an industry where it's both allocated on a regular basis. People are investing in automation. That's the right way to work. I'll hand it over to uh, Swatha now for the next uh, phase of this webinar. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much, Vivek. And I would like to thank all the panelists for this wonderful panel discussion. Since I can still see a lot of questions rolling in, it means that it was a very interactive one. So I would request all the atten attendees that we will compile all these questions and we will share with our speakers to answer it offline. And we will share that over an email with all of you. So moving on to the next session. So we have a very interesting uh, validatory presentation now. So which is OEM solution presentation by uh, by Mr. Danny Nack. He is Senior Vice President Sales and Marketing, JNS Systech Private Limited. So can we please have the presentation? Danny, are you, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, so I can hear you. Okay, so you can switch on your video, Danny. Um, I did, but somehow it's not enabling. I don't know, some, some issue here. We can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. You can just switch off your video. Switch on your video. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Okay, I can start now, right? Okay, um, I'm Danny. I'm the Senior Vice President of uh, Sales and Marketing here at uh, Altai 
um, technologies. Okay. And today I'm just going to talk about our super Wi-Fi solution for automated warehouses. Um, here is the um, contents that I'm going to go through. I know that uh, there's only like a five to 10 minutes so uh, to cover this. Um, so I will try to make it uh, short and, and concise. So if there's any questions, you can always ask me later, okay? So we'll go over the challenges first and then I will explain why. Um... Hello? Okay. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about the challenges um, uh, that the operators are facing in the automated warehouses, okay? Um, first of all, is the coverage, because uh, in the background picture, you will see actually the uh, typical warehouses, you know, for automated uh, automation. And you will see there are a lot of boxes on, most of them are uh, uh, almost fully automated. So on the right hand side, you see all are full with the boxes. Okay. And then you will may you may only have like a few operators to um, deal with all these uh, computers. And the uh, typical size is around few thousand square meter and always they have uh, very high ceilings. And sometimes even with metallic ob obstacles, that's make uh, wireless um, uh, coverage very difficult. Okay. And second is about the course. Um, actually, or in all these automated warehouses, they would use, uh, uh, mostly they would use the AGV. Uh, AGV actually stands for automated guided vehicles in order to do the picking, moving, and even sorting, okay? And some of you may have seen uh, some of those uh, um, videos on YouTube, you know, about how um, Amazon automated their uh, logistics warehouses. So you'll see those uh, robots or uh, actually the, the AGVs moving around, okay, unmanned, and they operate like a 24 by seven. And, um, and all these AGVs, you know, uh, they are equipped with the wireless, with the Wi-Fi module and they all need to be connected to the back end server, okay? And they have this kind of a, like a, um, a health signal, they have to connect to the back end server every second or two, depends on which model uh, you're using. So the very reliable net wireless network it is very important for them because just imagine in a typical warehouse, you may have um, you know even uh, uh, more than a hundred of these AGVs running around. If anything happened in your network, you know, everything stopped and they can't afford it, okay? And also in terms of the compatibility, um, since they have to use wireless and among all these available wireless technologies, Wi-Fi is the de facto standard because it is uh, very mature and also it uses the unlicensed band and virtually nowadays you can find Wi-Fi in almost all the devices that you have, okay? So the next session is about why how, or I would put it, uh, how Altai Super Wi-Fi Solution helped the, the people to automate their warehouses and to achieve it, okay? So first of all, it is about our technology. So we have the patented smart antenna technology. Actually, the, this technology can maximize the Wi-Fi coverage uh, with our smart antenna technology, okay? Uh, together with the digital processing algorithm, and they, we can achieve a very good RF performance, okay? And we can achieve up to 1.7 kilo uh, range in terms of line of sight, and also about 500 meter for near line of sight scenario, okay? And we are talking about like a standard Wi-Fi devices, and nobody else can do it, okay? And second is also some other technologies that we develop, like the air fire technology and also the smart load balancing, which are targeted to optimize the throughput and capacity. And the third is about the total cost of ownership, TCL. Um, because of our large area coverage that we can offer, so basically you can minimize the number of AP or in our time term, we call our, uh, our AP, the Wi-Fi base stations, to a minimum. So this way you actually reduce not just the capex, but also the opex. So in overall, the TCO will be the lowest when you deploy our time solution compared with the others. And also we offer redundant links 
for critical communications. As I mentioned earlier, those are 24 by seven operations. They can't afford the downtime. So apart from the, when you talk about network design, you, you try to provide like a, a redundant coverage. And on top of that, our solution also provide redundant link. So in case there's a, a one link is down and you have the, the other link to pick up. Okay, and that is very important. And also about the rooming, because those AGVs are rooming around in this large warehouse or logistics hubs, a few thousand square meters, okay? And when you get out of the AP's coverage, the AGV has to room from one AP to another. If you are using a, uh, you know, Altai solution, because we offer very large error coverage, so in most cases, you only need very few uh, AP or Altai Wi-Fi base stations. So you basically minimize the rooming. On top of it, our rooming also we have optimized it in order to have a very low latency. And also all our product designs are of rugged industrial design, so which can stand for very harsh environment. So talking about design considerations, I'll give you just a few, uh, some points for you guys to know. First, it's about our coverage. As I mentioned, you know, we are the one that who can offer very large coverage. So in a typical size of uh, this um, uh, warehouse, like up to 8,000 square meter, you, can, you only need one Wi-Fi base station from Altai, the, our flagship product, A8EIN, okay? In a smaller warehouse, or you can use our uh, mid-range product called A3EI, which can also cover up to 5,000 square meter, okay? So in this scenario, you only need one to cover. And in contrast, if you use other common uh, APs from the market, you may need around 20 of them, okay? And the cost of those installations will be much higher than using Altai solution. But for network design point of view, sometimes even if you only need one to cover the whole um, area, you may want to deploy a second one for the sake of redundancy. As I mentioned earlier, because all these automated warehouses they are running 24 by seven and they can't afford any downtime, okay? So this way, uh, by just deploying two base stations, you can already cover the whole area without any blind spot and also with redundancy already. Even if one of the, uh, the, the base stations is down, it doesn't matter is the equipment or the power or the network, you have another one to take up the role to maintain the network and to maintain the operation. So next is about fast rooming. As I mentioned earlier, when the AGV is moving around from one corner to another corner in the warehouse, and you know, you can't avoid the, to room from one AP to another. In our case, you can actually minimize it. If you only have one AP, then you just, you don't need rooming at all. But in some cases you may, as I mentioned, with a redundant coverage, you will have two AP. I mean, Altai super Wi-Fi station, base stations. Then you still have rooming. And in this rooming, apart from the standard AO2.11 KVR, we also optimize the, uh, the mechanism for rooming. So our rooming, can offer very low latency. Um, if you use our CPE, which is the VX200, it is specially designed, it's a very compact one, which can fit in those small AGV, okay? And it, it can also uh, sustain the hot, uh, the high temperature, and also the vibration. And we can uh, support less than 80 millisecond latency, okay? Even under the uh, WPA2 authentication. While you compare with the standard AP, uh, which normally takes more than 150 milliseconds, okay? Next. So typically in the warehouse, when you talk about coverage, of course, people will prefer using 2.4 gigahertz because um, as we all know, 
um, two form, uh, in Wi-Fi, there are two uh, primary uh, bands. One is a 2.4 gigahertz, the other is 5 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz, of course, by, by far the coverage is better and the penetration is better than 5 gigahertz. But unfortunately, 2.4 is getting more and more congested. This is why in most cases it is preferred to use both bands for dual band coverage and also for channel planning you should uh, plan it beforehand. So if you want to have the best performance, you should control all this channel assignment in your warehouse, okay? Even if you have other Wi-Fi network in, in the house, you should control their channel planning. Next, this is about the capacity planning for the AGV. This is also very important, apart from the coverage, uh, how many Wi-Fi base stations that you will need from Altai it also depends on the number of AGVs required. And here is some guide for you. Uh, typically for Altai Super Wi-Fi base station, we can uh, support about 80 AGVs per radio. So if you're running dual band, you can support both 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. Okay, um, so about the, so, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, I don't know, the slides are just flipping around. Okay, so the last but not the least is about the security. Of course, you know, uh, you don't want to be hacked, that's why you need to turn on your security. And, um, and I would like to go through the reference case as well, since I know the time is uh, limited. Um, so first of all, in short, we are the one that uh, probably the only one who can offer such kind of optimal performance for automated warehouse. And we do have a lot of uh, deployment scenarios, uh, uh, you know, in many places, uh, particularly in China, uh, because the e-commerce is very booming there. And definitely we would like to also penetrate here in India market. Let's take a look at those reference cases, please. So, this is a typical use of our um, HGV, uh, of our Wi-Fi base stations in the warehouse. This one is actually the quite a large one, it's about 10,000 square meter, okay? Even have a three layer shelf and the height is it's more than two meter. And actually, this one is not so crowded. This is why we can use only one eight, eight uh, base station to cover the whole area and there are only about 45 AGVs running. So we only use uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Next, please. This one is uh, uh, smaller and it has about 7,000 square meter. This is actually the more for those, uh, um, more like a, a, um, a Amazon stuff, you know, to uh, mainly selling the books and some other uh, commodities. And uh, they have about eight rows by 23 columns, okay? So it is a quite a typical uh, logistics hub. Again, we only use one of our Wi-Fi based days for full coverage. And this one, by the way, they have quite a lot. They have, uh, at the peak hour, they have over 100, about 115 AGVs running simultaneously. And even though we recommend only 80 per band, but this one, they stretch to our limit. They use only one Wi-Fi base, wi wi base stations using only 2.4 gigahertz and supporting 115 AGVs running without any problem. So again, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoy our show. And if you have any questions, you can also contact our distributor in India, which is a JNS system tech and uh, Mahash Taku is our guy. So if anyone has questions, you can also follow up with them. Thank you very much. Sure, Danny. Thank you so much. If any questions we'll come across, we'll share with Mahesh, your teammate, okay? So, uh, so this is the end to our uh, today's webinar, but before, uh, you know, taking this off, I would like to make a very important announcement for our next webinar. So it is on uh, 3rd of July and the theme of the next webinar will be bridging the middle 
transforming warehousing industry in india and what will be the winning trends and we are doing we are going to do it in association with night frank on 3rd of july 2020 the most the, the very interesting part of the next webinar is going to be the white paper launch which will be done by the night frank team and uh, they will be launching the india warehousing market report so i would request all of you to join join us on 3rd july and now moving on so i would like to thank all the panelists and the presenter for you know taking out the time to join our today's webinar i would also like to thank richland developers and jns systech private limited to for supporting us and have for making this webinar happen and also i would like to tell all of you that all the offline questions will be surely taken offline I'll share these questions with the respective speakers and get this, get that answer for you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ravi. Thank you.